Oh, hello there, Blay. How are you doing today? Doing just fine? Awesome. Well, today we're going to take x-rays of your teeth, but first, before I get into that, let's go ahead and teach you about the x-rays that we're going to be doing on you today. Bet you're going to kind of really want to know about that. So let's go over here. Well, these are a couple of fine instruments that we have here. It looks like we're going to be learning our XCP kit or our ring or whatever you want to go and call it. But for the most part, hold on, I'm noticing something here. These are films. Uh, that's a little bit old. We're not going to go do that. So let's go ahead and get this stuff out of here. And now let's go ahead and go to the digital realm. That's a little bit more better. So let's go ahead and talk about a couple of these different instruments. But before... Oh, before I go and touch them though, remember our golden rule, we need to go and glove up every time before we go and work with anything that's gonna work on a patient. So let's go ahead and uh, always be ready for your glove, right? Well, one, two, three. Awesome, now that we got my gloves on, let's go ahead and look at our whole equipment here. We have our XCP ring, or what I'm gonna call the hole in certain portions. We got our pole, and we got our little basket that's gonna hold our sensor over here that we're gonna talk about. These are gonna be what we're gonna use on the back teeth though. On the front, we're gonna use these blue. They may come in different colors or different shapes or whatever it may be, but for the most part, yellow for back, blue for front. Going over to here, let's look at our sensor though. Our sensor is looking real nice and bare, but a lot of times when we're gonna use them on the patient, we're gonna need to put some protection for them. Depending on the place that you work at, they might have the, let's say, anatomically correct uh, protection sleeves to be able to mold around the sensor really well. But some of them are gonna be nice and loose. So we're gonna put some extra grip on here so it's really nice and snug, so it doesn't go rolling around when we use it on our x-ray sleeve. A nice little tool that we have is like one of these little finger cots that we can go and unravel and just go and throw onto here. Make sure when you're going putting these on though, that you unravel it completely so you get a nice snug fit onto one of these. And there we go, nice and snug. I'll let you go ahead and do that homework on how to get one of these bad boys on here. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with one of our posterior x-rays. Going over here, let's go take a look at this basket. So now this basket style, for the most part, has these little clamps and hooks. And if I go and stretch this little top one, it has a little bit of uh, grippiness to it. So all I have to do is just take my sensor and go and place it in there so it stretches over the top and gets clamped down right just as so. With that, now I can go and place my other parts onto my whole little system here. I'm going to go start over on the upper right of the patient. So. What I need to do is I need to go and put my pole into the correct part of my little basket. With that, I can just go take this and put it over here on the right side so it fits nice and snug where those little posts sit in there. And it's going to be going off to the right. And I can go and take my little hole or the window and I just need to make sure when I use this window on here that it's actually aiming at my sensor. So if I can go and maneuver it just like so, I can see my complete sensor right through that window, which is perfect. If you have it on in a bad way, you might only see half the sensor through this window. Or if you're really blind, you go and put the ring all the way out here and just get laughed at by the other dental assistant. So let's just go ahead and throw that on the correct way. With this, this is going to let me take my upper right x-ray and my lower left x-ray. But in case that you do have to start on a different side or you need to go and flip it or change it around, here's a little quick tip when it comes to this. Just go ahead and hold your sensor by the little x-ray grippy part you're just gonna go ahead and take this x-ray sensor and hold it just as so, and take the pole out and flip the pole to the other side, just like so. And once you have that pole flipped, you'll notice that the hole is wrong. So all we have to do is just go and remove the hole and flip it like a pancake. Now we got it all ready up and going. But one last thing is you're gonna need to flip that sensor around so that the wire just goes directly out of the patient's mouth and it follows this pole every time you make that switch. So that's an easy enough thing to just go and remove it, flip it, and you're good to go. Now that I got my x-ray equipment all nice and prepared for my patient's upper right, let's go ahead and show Blay what we got going on and see what he thinks. Hey Blay, so now we have our x-ray, let's go ahead and start taking this. Oh, don't worry, it's not gonna hurt or anything like that. I'm just gonna have you open just really big, big like a lion. Okay, and oh, thank you, really good. Now before I just go and start just jamming it all up in there, trying to like swipe a credit card that's not been reading, I'm gonna go and gently bring this ring a little bit back so I have a little bit of playroom in here and this is where my cheek's gonna fit. 
and I'm gonna keep it horizontal before I go and put it in there. And this is the key part, because as I go and leave it nice and flat, I can gently just go and roll it into place, and now I got a comfortable fit for my patient. I'm gonna go ahead and have you bite down right there, okay? And also a key thing, as I'm rolling it into place, I'm holding it against the teeth that I want to take a picture of. So right now, I'm gonna go and take a picture of my molars. So I'm gonna have it set down there right on the molars, and I'm gonna have it held up on those top teeth so that we can so my patient can bite down nice and tight. Now, the main piece that's gonna be the easy part is going and lining my tube head up. I'm gonna go and pinch this together by holding onto the pole right here on the back with one finger, thumb it right to, to the skin. You can leave a little space in between. So now I'm gonna go and use my handy dandy tube head. So with it right here by my side, I all I have to do is just go and take my tube and just go make it so that it's parallel with this ring. Stepping off to the side, you can see that it's parallel, ring to ring. So now we do have no issue with taking our x-ray. We should be able to get our shot. So let's take it. Coming back over here, we can see our result with a decent shot. We have the full crown, the root tip, and a little bit of space above so that we can see if there's any abscesses or anything. So apart from that, very good job. From there, it becomes easy as just move it out of the way, slide it forward a little bit, bite down, and then go ahead and readjust and get lined up. Now, the issue that comes with this sometimes is this ring in general. It may lie. For the most part, it's a great guide, but sometimes you need to go off the script because it might lie to you. Such as if I go and take this shot that I have right here, everything should line up and give me a good result like I did before. Let's go see what it looks like over here. Now I can come and take that premolar shot and see what we have. Well, this one's not as pretty. I do have my crowns in the spot, but I don't have that extra space that I have over here for my premolars. What's happening in that case is, even though this is a great guide, we're not accounting for the extra length that these actual premolars might have. As an example, it's as if we are staring at these premolars where they're supposed to be, but these premolars root tips are a little bit outside the plane of where my sensor would capture. So to be able to compensate for that, all I'd have to do is just go ahead, use the guide, but apart from just using it as, as a recommendation, I might need to go and flip the script and just raise it a little bit higher, aim a little bit down, and I'm still going to get a decent shot. I'm just going to change what I'm receiving on that end. And as a comparative, you can see that I have a little bit more room above to see any of the periapical tissue or any tissue around the apex or the root tip. So in case you need a little bit of a visual, here's about the system. You aim your ring, it goes in, projects that image of the tooth onto the sensor, leaving a little bit of that root tip outside of the sensor's capture field. So if we just go and increase the angle or move, in this case, our tube head up, we can then in theory foreshorten or make the tooth a little bit more shorter as we then go and shoot our rays and project it onto the film, giving us proper room for everything. So that's a nice thing about the rings. If you need it to be nice and parallel, it's an awesome tool to be able to get things to look exactly how they look in the mouth without too much distortion. But sometimes you have to flip the script and just go a little bit off schedule to get your shot. Same exact thing for the lowers. The only thing that we tend to do with that is when we are going and putting this together, let's say I was going to do this same side on the right. All I have to do is go ahead and flip it upside down. The issue becomes is that if I was to go and try to shove this in my patient's mouth, well for one, this wire is going to have to go and take a U-turn in their gullet and have to exit out the front again. So let's go ahead and start by flipping our sensor around to the other side. Another piece is this bar right here. Now if I was to go and take it to this patient which has a nice pulled back cheek, well it may fit but there might be issues that be caused. So I need to go ahead and shift this to another side because right now if I try to insert it. I'm gonna have this I'm gonna have this roadblock of trying to get it into their mouth. So a little technique that I always tend to remember is flipping the poles and flipping the holes. As an example, right now I have the sensor and this holder facing towards the bottom. All I have to do at this point is go ahead and remove the pole from one side and flip it to the other. As I've done here. Now, one thing to check though, whenever you're trying to put this together, does this hole or ring show the actual sensor on the other side? Which it does a little bit, but I should be able to see the whole thing nice and easy. What we have to do is finish the saying, flip the pole, now flip the hole. And I'm just gonna flip it as I take it out like a pancake. Not gonna rotate it and slide it back in. 
Now I can see my whole sensor and I can go and use this space that I have in this little spot for my cheek and such. As I go and place into the mouth, like I did before, keep it horizontal, get it in there, roll it into place to make it nice for your patient and bite down follow the ring as it tells us and guides. As a nicety, whenever you're putting these into place, especially when it comes to the lower, it doesn't feel nice to go and shove this in their mouth and have them bite it into place. There's a nicer and easier way of doing this where let's say I'm gonna take this lower and they have a tori, some extra bone or something on the lingual side of the patient's mouth. If I go and place this into the mouth, just as I've done already, and I go and try to push it down, have it set where exactly I want to. Now, as the patient bites, all they're doing is securing it in the place where I had it. And there's no shifting that's happening. Whereas, sometimes I'll see some assistants, especially the brand new ones, they'll put it all the way to the top, anticipating that the patient's going to bite it to place, which is going to potentially, which is going to potentially rub hard on the lingual side of the lower anteriors. As far as the same thing, place it for lowers, aim it, and hope the ring doesn't lie to you. And that's a nice shot right there. Now, when it comes to the anteriors, that's where we're gonna head over to this blue one. With the anteriors, instead of going and laying it flat just like this, we are going to go and make it stand vertically, and in this system, it's just gonna go and clamp on just like so. With that, we're gonna take this to our front teeth. Same exact system, start it off, start it off horizontal, roll it into place, have it bite down directly on the tooth that you're going to take a picture on. In this case, it's going to be our canine. You can see from this result and aim that it comes out pretty good. Sometimes though, when you take these shots, such as I'm gonna position this for my front teeth, I go in, take aim, just as I normally would do. You may find that you're getting really close to cutting off the edges of your anteriors. In that case, we can do a little bit of a trick by adding our handy dandy cotton roll. When this system, all you'd have to do is when you're putting this in, add this to the equation and all that's going to happen is if our patient was to open right here, place it so that they are biting down on that cotton roll and just have them bite down gently so it secures the whole tool in place. But as we go and take this shot, it'll give us the space that we want with that cotton roll in place and a little bit of that adjusted angle to ease off the edge and give us a little bit of space below in case you needed it. Like I mentioned with the yellow system on the posterior teeth, same thing applies with the anteriors. If you go ahead and do the lower portion, when you're placing it in there, make sure you go and roll it into there and keep in mind of any tori or extra pieces of bone or even just the narrowness of their arch. Because if you just go and try to jam this and slip it in there, you might go and disturb them or get them pretty mad at you. So keep it flat, roll it into place, have them gently bite down to secure the spot. Don't have them push it into place. Take aim and fire, just as we have here. As far as bite wings go, bite wings are bite wings. You can either go look at my old video, but if you try to use this type of claw doodad, it'll tend to have a little pole system that'll come out here with a ring to go and assist you for doing bite wings. Don't know what a bite wing is? Check my video on bite wings uh, that I'll have in the corner up here. And look out for other future videos about x-rays or any dental related material that we have here on Dental Things. With all that said, check out the other dental videos I have to see what other dental things we're able to do. Make sure to subscribe to see future videos and see you later.